Hello, this is Mark Roberts from Red Hat, and I'm presenting to you today on Code Ready Workspaces. Now, I have a number of environments that I can use um, that I want to use today. One I'm going to create right now, uh, and this shows a Git repository for a team of developers who are working on this together. And there's a readme file here that someone within the project team has put together to make it easy for new developers to get up and running. So we give them a Git repository URL. And within there, we have this option here to click on this button that says, start the workspace, my developer workspace. And this will actually point us to the URL that's shown underneath, which has the code ready workspace unique URL for the cluster that we are working on right now. And then on the end, we have the URL of where the content is held. So effectively, we're pointing at ourselves. The important file that exists within here is this dev file. And I'm going to go and hit the button now and get this started. So I'm going to open that link in a new tab. And it wants me to log in. So I'm going to log in as user 2, put in my password to authenticate to the OpenShift cluster, and log in there. And let's not record passwords. And that's starting the process of a, a nice relaxing animation that we can see to watch this crane in operation, building out the environment. You'll see a terminal window appear here on the right hand side in a second or two as different things happen as it's building out the environment. But this is a good opportunity to show you what it's actually building for us. And I can show you that based on the fact that it's just opened up this dev file here. So we have a file here called devfile.yaml. And if we point Code Ready Workspace at a Git repository, it's going to look for a file called devfile.yaml in the root of that Git repository. So if we have a look at that file, quite complicated. There's a fair amount of stuff in here that's been put together by a development team over a period of time. You don't create one of these things just straight off the bat. You incrementally add to it as new assets are created within your project space. So there's various things in here in terms of referencing certain plugins that are going to be used. There's certain images that are going to be used and there are commands that are going to be used. So here we've got start dev mode Quarkus backend. Uh, it's an executable. It shows us the command that's going to be executed. It's going to run a Maven compile and it's going to run in a particular location. So it's building out the assets that will be required to allow the team to start the application running within that environment. We've now got our development environment created. We have our file explorer on the left hand side that I can use to browse through the set of files that exist within the environment. Um, we've got the ed main part of the screen. Give it over to the editor. Now, so if I press F1, then I get these pop up uh, options that show me a number of commands that are available with shortcut keys uh, on the right hand side for the most common ones. But if there's a particular function that I want to use, then I can just start typing and it will offer me all the choices associated with that command. So it's good if you know what you want to do, but you don't know the exact command, but that can be really useful to get to these shortcut commands. Now, if I take that out completely, I can put a file name in there or a partial file name, and then I can click on a file and open it up in the editor. The left hand side panel will then show me where that file is within the tree, which is quite nice as well. And I can start editing, which is really nice. And this is a Quarkus application, so the environment's just caught up with itself and shown me the uh, Quarkus development tool, um, getting started sort of guide, some help and tips of where you can get information about developing Quarkus based applications, which is what this is uh, on Eclipse J. I'm going to close that window because now what I want to do is I want to start my application running. I'm going to start the Quarkus backend in developer mode. So I click on there. And that will start it up, run the Maven build, which is quite quick. And then I'll get some pop ups on the right hand side that I can select. So I don't want to open that link, but I'll open this in preview mode. And that's going to show me my application actually running, which is fantastic. Now, I also want to open up my Node.js front end application in developer mode. And that's going to allow me to have um, automatic replacement of my running application as I make changes to my code, as you'll see in a second. So I'm going to start off now just by putting in uh, some text in here. This is some content. Submit that and I have a message. Great. 
but actually I want the title part here that says another message to be in uppercase letters. So on the function here that does the get title, I'm going to do a two upper case on that. And that's going to translate that, uh, return that uh, title in uppercase letters. Fantastic. So let's now just refresh the application. And there it is in uppercase letters. So we have this wonderful developer mode, live code replacement within the running app which is great for a developer because as I make changes to the code, I can immediately see the impact that that has. Now, I can also debug the application within here as well. So let's put a breakpoint in, in my application there. Here and run start debugging. And that puts me into the debug window on the uh, left hand side there. And now if I refresh, we're gonna hit the breakpoint. And I can open up my local variables in here and I can see the value of the content variable. And I'm just going to put on the end of here, debug in capital letters. So I've changed that value. Let's get rid of that breakpoint now because I don't need it and continue to run the application. And there you go. We have debug on the end of that message. I have another environment available to me as well. So I'm going to log in here as user one. Put in my password for OpenShift. Okay, so that's created our new workspace uh, in which we're going to do the next phase of work. It gives us this nice welcome to your workspace message, which shows a few commands that are typically required. We'll close that window down for now. Now we have some simple code in here within the source directory. And uh, I just want to make some really simple changes to this code. Um, okay, so first off, let's just show the Git integration to what happens in here. And all I'm going to do as a code change within this application is start to put some dashes in here. But watch what happens in the sort of left hand side area of the screen as I do this. It automatically saves the content within here if we switch on auto save. So let's switch on auto save. So there you go. It automatically saves and we get a Git notification that something has happened. When we've got edits that need to be saved, you'll see a little white pop up, a white circle pop up next to the names. So if I put some more dashes in here, you'll see that the little white circle appears and then it saves very, very quickly. So your edits in here are not out of date for very long at all. So it shows the modification here of which file has been changed and which directory tree has been changed. We can go into the Git repository in here uh, and I can see what's changed within the file. So it shows me this working tree comparison between the old version on the left uh, with the red highlight and the new version on the right uh, with the sort of green color highlight. So I'll get rid of that tree. Now I can then stage this particular change and I can put a comment in here just call it a small change and I can control enter to commit that. Now down the bottom uh, sort of left of the screen you can see there a one or arrow pointing up that means there is one change to push to the git repository so I click on that and that starts the process of pushing to the git repository tree will take uh, updates from this particular user within this session here. Okay, so that's the Git changes done. A few more things of interest to show you here is one is how we can interact with OpenShift. If we open up the workspace in this one, we can open up a terminal. And the terminal that's been used here or the terminal that's been used to create this code ready workspace environment contains quite a lot of assets. It's one that we put together for a developer experience workshop within Red Hat in the UK. And within here, I have the OC command line. Fantastic. I also have the ODO that we're going to have a look at in a second. And I also have uh, TKN for Tekton and KN for Knative. So I've loaded up into this developer environment here lots and lots of command line utilities. Bearing in mind, if everybody on the project team uses the same Code Ready Workspace definition file, they're all going to get that exact same definition. And let me show you in the editor the dev file that's been used to create this. So if I open up my editor now and show you the developer file, what you'll see here is key.io slash 
M-A-R-R-O-B-E-R for Mark Roberts slash DevX dash Terminal 4, the terminal that's been used to create the terminals being used in the bottom of the screen here. Once you use that particular terminal, feel free. It's uh, completely freely available at key.io slash M-A-R-R-O-B-E-R slash DevX terminal. It's a container image. It runs on OpenShift as it is right now, uh, and you can make use of it if you wish. Now, if I look at who I am at the moment, I'm actually logged in as a system account that's been used to create the CHE environment. So I don't want that. I want to log in as a proper user. So I have an option over here to log in to OpenShift. And in here, I'm going to put my credentials. And that's now logged me in. I can close that window and have run the OC Who Am I at the bottom of the screen again. Now logged in as user one. Fantastic. I can actually start to do something useful.